shut up compressor. Okay, so I've got all of the masks in place that are going to be placed right now. And now it's time to start restoring the black where we've got the white over here by the fuselage codes and the silver where we've got the leading edges and all that kind of stuff. So I've loaded some MRP black into the 267. Now it's time to go to town. Make sure it's as clear as possible. Okay, so the surface has been taken back to black, and we are just about ready to start laying down the camo pattern. Now, I've got a lot of work to do before I get to the final colors. So first, I'm just going to map it out with a dark blue and a medium blue. And for that, I'm going to use some 237C blue and 238 International blue. International blue is kind of close to intermediate blue, but it's a little bit darker. Again, these are just uh, very simply to map out the camo. Not doing anything super fancy yet. So, we've got essentially the main camouflage blocked out. The darker blue and the lighter blue swung around up here up top from these swooping bands that go back and basically provide enough light blue to not completely hide the insignias with the darker blue. So, with that, I'm going to call it a night and we're going to come back and start hitting this hard tomorrow, building up various tones and things like that now that we've got the uh, overall structure in a mostly happy place. Oh, a little bit right there I want to kind of deepen, I guess.
Okay. That's not looking too shabby. Clean up, call it a night. Okay, tonight I've gone ahead and marked out a bit more of the camo and refined it a little bit, looking more at references. I really think this part up here was dark blue and it looks like this sort of snaky pattern kind of came in here and more or less traced the outside of the insignia, basically because the dark blue and the dark blue and the insignia sort of are close enough to blur together, so it's surrounded by lightness. Uh, made the curve by the UN shallower, defined the wing camo a little bit more, and now I've been adding some variation with some stencils. So first I used, where the hell did it go? There it is. The SU-34 Eggplant Dark Gray. I'm really trying to play with things that are gonna fuck with the blues uh, saturation. So next up, we're gonna do some chestnut brown. And I've got basically two stencils I'm playing with. I've got this uh, RB stencil from Radu Brisnan's site and an Ushi stencil from Ushi site and kind of available all over the place. Uh, I like the Radu one a little bit more because if you look at the two of them together, I think it's a little bit more randomized, but they're, they both do a solid job of it. So, you know, can't really go wrong. All right. And this is showing up, believe me. Um, it's just hard to make out entirely on the screen and with the direction of the lighting. I'm sure that 90% of this will vanish when it comes time to do the final colors. But we can try, right? My biggest frustration with these is getting into things like the wing root. Almost impossible with these stencils. Uh, they've got edges and we'd have to bend it way more than we would like to really tackle these, so. Hello, freehand. Tricky thing is knowing how far to take this, get that balance pin, it's showing up and it's showing up so much that you have to basically bury it all to cover it. There we go, I'm trying to get that fucker. All right, I think we're good on the chocolate brown. Let's go with our next contestant. Sorry, chestnut brown. So this next one should be interesting. Primer Red, the red oxide goodness. Now why are we using Primer Red of all colors? First I'm gonna add a little bit of do 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 a little bit of the eggplant back into it. Just to keep it honest. Okay, so I've taken the Primer Red and I've thrown in a little bit of eggplant dark gray to sort of maroon it up a little bit. The reason for this is red tones under blue tend to have the impact of desaturating things. And every single time I look at the supposed correct colors of the P47M, which honestly, for the 63rd, nobody really knows for sure. 
Um, but I see people suggesting it's like Insignia Blue and Azure, and Azure makes no fucking sense because we're in England in 1945, not North Africa. But when I see Azure and Insignia Blue, I look at it and it just screams, uh, A, it screams ugly as shit. B, they just, it seems so blue saturated and just doesn't look right at all to my eyes. Especially when you compare it to the color photos and the, you know, Azure is a very purple blue. And I just, I don't see it. So. Getting in here with reds up front to desaturate things. This makes sense to me. Okay, so I got to walk around for a few minutes and think. And I think I want to put a bit more red down overall on the dark blue. Uh, mainly because... That is the area that I want to be... More controlled for desaturation. I'm comfortable with what I'm going to be doing with the lighter blue. So just to recap real quickly before I get into other colors, the rationale behind adding the reds and the browns and things like that is that when I was doing my black basing 201 video series and trying to figure out what you could put underneath a dark blue like right here, that would actually have an impact on the shading and the tonal variation. The one thing that worked pretty well was using reds and browns to slightly desaturate it. Um, they don't really tweak the tonality all that much, but they do sort of bring back the saturation, which is its own variation. And the reason that I went that way instead of going with lighter colors, things like that, is that dark blue especially seems very susceptible to going very bright and saturated when you put down a lighter color underneath it. So by going and keeping with something sort of dark and muted, it will help us maintain that dark tone that we want. But hopefully the saturation will have just enough play to make it a, a bit more visually interesting than just a swath of dark blue. So next up, we're gonna be doing some PRU blue. Now, my theory behind the 63rd Fighter Squadron's blue-on-blue -blue camo is probably about as valid as anybody else's, because as far as I can tell, everybody else is uh, equally guessing or going off of, like, some obscure, somebody remembered something, blah, blah. So, the main theory, the main school of thought is that they, they were painted Insignia Blue and Azure Blue, which... I can buy the Insignia Blue, I just don't like it for the overall aircraft. I don't know, it looks weird to me when I see it on a model. But it's something I can feasibly buy for, you know, what I've seen of the photos. The Azure Blue, to me, doesn't make sense. Uh, the only thing that would make sense is, hey, we had a bunch of this paint for our, for our North Africa schemes and things like that, the Mediterranean schemes, and we just have a huge bunch of paint stocks left over here, paint shit. That's the, to me, that's the one logical play for it. However, the 56th fighter group was based at Boxted, which was entirely American. There were no RAF units there, any of that kind of stuff. And so I don't know why they would have a bunch of Azure Blue lying around. What was at Boxted? was a couple of units of photo reconnaissance aircraft. And if you've seen any photo recon, you know, especially American photo recon mosquitoes, they were painted PRU blue. So, hey, we need a light blue. Here's one. So that's, that's one thought. Um, the other option is insignia blue lightened with white. Which maybe, um, but when you try it, with model colors. I don't know if the pigments mixed or whatever are different, but I don't know. It, it looks, it goes weird and doesn't look quite right. Whereas when I've tried spraying the PRU blue, 
that looks pretty damn good. Um, I think it needs to be lighter than this. So the PRU blue right now is basically just start getting closer to this and then we'll lighten it up for the final. As for the darker blue, let's bring back the paint mule here. These are basically mixes of Insignia blue with some eggplant, the SU-34 color. And then this one is basically Insignia blue eggplant and some SCC-14 blue-black, which I think works pretty well. I mean, it's a, it's a good looking color. Um, definitely doesn't look as over the top blue as what you get in just Insignia blue. So. Anyway, let's do some painting. All right. 